In a hobby that can feel shrouded in mystery, there are probably a million things you don't know when you first start out in marine reef keeping. But that's not what this video is about. Today I'm going to tell you 5 things that you probably didn't know even after being in the hobby for a year, 2 years or maybe even longer. And if this is your first time here and you want a weekly dose of reefing goodness, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out when I upload. First up is that reference solutions exist that can tell you whether or not your test kits are accurate. There are times when you'll test water parameters, but something about the result doesn't quite feel right, so you may choose to double check the result with a different test kit. But if that test kit gives you a different result to the first, which do you trust? The answer is to check your test kits against a reference solution. You can get specific solutions like Tropic Marin NP Standard that give you a reading for nitrate and phosphate, or you can get something more broad like the Fauna Marin Multi Reference that will give you a reading for calcium, magnesium, alkalinity, nitrate, phosphate, and many more. Next up is something you've probably been doing wrong without realising – reading volumetric cylinders. Whether you're filling a vial to test your parameters, or taking a reading when calibrating your dosing pump, reading the exact water level in a cylinder can be tricky. The water sits in a convex shape whereby the level in the centre is lower than the outside. But do you take the reading from the lowest point or the highest point? Or do you split the difference? Well that convex curve is actually called the meniscus, and quite simply the correct way to read the measurement is to use the bottom of the meniscus. Now actually as long as you use the same point every time, it doesn't really matter as consistency is more important than the exact amount. It's just nice to know you're getting it right. Number 3 is that most people don't use frag racks for the proper purpose. In many tanks including mine, frag racks are used as a place to store frags of corals that are growing too quickly, and they're a really handy place to let frags settle before you sell them. But the proper way to use frag racks is for photo acclimating new corals. Most local fish shops will run their lights at lower intensities to avoid shocking the new arrivals they receive every week. So there's a good chance your aquarium light will be stronger and therefore has the potential to bleach new corals. So if you plan on placing any new corals high up in your tank, start by resting them on a frag rack nice and low, then slowly move the frag rack up to a higher spot over the next few weeks before fixing them in their final place on your rockscape. The penultimate thing you might not know is that some salt powders have high levels of phosphate. It probably feels safe to assume that salt mixes contain zero nitrate and phosphate. After all, many of us use water changes as part of our nutrient control regime, and some manufacturers even claim their mixes are free from nitrate and phosphate. But if you've never tested the parameters of your freshly mixed salt water, I'd recommend you give it a go. I recently did so on a tub of Tropic Marin Pro Reef Salt, and the phosphate came back at 0.08 parts per million, which was surprising given the tub claimed to be phosphate free. Now levels will vary from batch to batch, your source water may contain some phosphate, even if your TDS reads zero, and the test kits we use might not be completely accurate. So just because you get a high result doesn't necessarily mean you have a bad salt. But numerous other people have reported the exact same issue as me, and Tropic Marin themselves recently tested a batch at 0.07 parts per million. Now there is of course every chance other salt brands have the exact same issue. So all I'm really saying is that, if one of your parameters is out of whack, it's worth including a test on your newly mixed salt water as part of your search to isolate the cause. And finishing on a lighter note, I want to tell you something that might make you look differently at your starfish. You see the hole in the centre of the star's body? Well that is of course its mouth, and you'll see them pressed up against the glass, eating scraps of algae. But have a closer look and see if you can spot any other orifices. The answer is that you can't, and that, dead in the centre of its mouth, is its bum hole. Which means that everything it eats will taste like sh**.